Hi everybody, this is Ginger Balch and today it's all going to be about suds and water and felting. So today what we're going to do is we're going to um, make felted covered soaps. And this is a great class that I teach for children, although I do teach adults um, this class as well. Um, it's something that um, is really easy for kids to handle and it makes a really fun uh, project. And I've actually had um, a mom and a couple kids that they did these felted soaps for holiday gifts last year. And uh, they were really pleased with the, uh, with the results. So today that's what we're going to do. Now I have a sister that makes homemade soap, so I kind of like to use those. And all you do is you just take your bar of soap and you use your, um, your, your wool fiber. And wool fiber comes in all different uh, types, like this is wool roving, so it comes in these little strips like this. And then you can also get what they call bats, which are more flat pieces like this. But these all work very nicely for our project. You need to make sure that's 100% wool, um, otherwise it won't felt. You don't want it to be a blend. Um, now, you probably are wondering, felted soaps, what is that all about? Well, it makes a wool covering, kind of like a sweater for the soap. So when you have it in your shower or your bathtub or whatever, when you go to use it and you wet it, what happens is it gets all, all uh, sudsed up and you can use it instead of using like a washcloth and it will help like exfoliate your skin and it lasts a really long time. I've, I've actually had bars of soap pretty much like a month in my shower um, and what happens is as you use it, it starts to, um, the outside of the soap becomes more and more felted. It gets tighter and tighter. It's kind of like when you um, shrink up a wool sweater. Um, the more you felt, the more that you throw that in the washing machine, the tighter it's going to get. So the more that you use your felted soap, the tighter the felt gets, but it, it still keeps getting nice and sudsy. And you just keep using it until finally there's just no more suds because the soap is gone. And then you just make another one. Um, so anyway, so what we're going to do, all that you need is your soap, your wool, and some water. Um, you can felt with cold water, hot water, Hot water, of course, you know, makes it feel a little bit better on your hands. So um, you can make them solid colors. You can make them multicolors. So I brought a, just a, a variety of colors here. And what we start out doing is we take some of our fiber and like with the roving, I'm going to open it up a little bit like this. And then what you do is you just wrap it around your soap just like that and I'm gonna open up a little bit more I'm just gonna break it off a little bit, actually and you just open it up like that and then just wrap it around the soap and the thing with felting is you want to actually have your fibers going in different directions because it helps felt better because the wool fibers mesh together so what I'm going to do next is go the other direction, this way. And just in case the soap, like that. And you wanna make sure you get the corners of the soap. I'm just gonna set that down and maybe we'll, we'll put a little more color on this too. So we'll take this. I'm just gonna open it up a little bit like that and then I'm just going to go in a different direction and cover my soap up like that and I'll put a little bit more now you can always start off felting and this this goes for any type of felting that you do you can always add more more wool if you feel that Sometimes what happens with the soaps are the corners might become exposed and you want to put a little bit more wool over them, wool over it, and that's not a problem at all. Okay, so now the other thing that we're going to do is now that once we have it encased, I'm just going to hold it in my hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it into the water. Now you don't want to just plunk it in 
and then leave it. You have to kind of keep your hands around it because what wants to happen is as soon as this water, this, um, the wool gets wet, it wants to expand. So we want to make sure that we keep it in case because the thing with making felt, um, working with wool and making felt is, um, dry felt will felt too wet, but wet and wet will not felt together. So we have to make sure that we keep it all encased. So I'm going to keep my hand on this and I'm going to put it, whoops, I really have it over fold here. Okay, so now I, I got it in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my hands over it and I'm going to squish on it. Now, normally when you do felting, what happens is you want to take your wool and it always helps when it has a little bit of soap. Well, we're already working with soap, so we don't need to add any to it. So what I'm doing is I'm giving it some squishes. And I don't think that you can hear it, but what's happening is um, the wool is getting wet and it's starting to get soapy. So I'm just going to very carefully um, plunge it in again, get a little bit more water in there because we want the wool to be totally wet. Now, see, if I lifted my hands off the soap, what's going to happen is the wool is going to go with my hand, not until it's totally wet. And as soon as that wool separates from the other wool, you won't be able to felt it together because it's wet on wet. It has to be dry on wet. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm, I can feel all the suds coming. Just going to move my hand a little bit. And now what I'm going to do, and it's a good thing to be prepared and have a towel. So now it's nice and wet. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll it around in my hands. And that's why this is such a great project uh, for kids or as a family um, project. So I'm just going to roll it around like this is once and maybe sometimes with the smaller children, you might want to start it yourself because what happens is the wool just kind of goes all over the place. Um, but once you get it started, you can give it to the children and then all they have to do is this. And this is a great project to go outside in the spring and summer and uh, just get wet and soapy. and You just don't care. Kind of cool off on a hot day. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to keep rubbing it like this because what I'm doing is the friction of my rubbing the wool, the wet wool is going to start making those fibers mesh together. And you just keep rolling it around and just keep rubbing it. Now you can see it's all puffy and that's because the wool is just not felted yet. As the more that we do this, the puffiness will go away because it will start to um, get tighter. And if you feel that it's starting to get a little too soapy, what you can do is just kind of put it in the water a little bit, give it a squish, see all the soap that's coming out of it. There we go. And you just keep rolling it around. And it's one of those things that once you've done it um, and, and you've finished making one, you'll know, you can feel the difference, like how soft and, and puffy this is right now. But the more that I rub it and um, the more that you work this, the, the more pressure you can put on it. You have to be a little more dainty with it at the very beginning. But see, I'm just rolling it around and just keep rubbing it. If you have a little scrub board, like one of those old fashioned uh, uh, boards for washing clothes, you can even just kind of roll it around on, on that. Or if you have um, anything that has a little bit of texture, like a, uh, one of those rubber mats for underneath your dish drainers, you can rub it on that too. Um, anything that gives you a little bit of abrasion. So I'm just going to keep rubbing this. And it doesn't take an awful long time before it's really becomes felted. Just going to get a little bit more water here, squish it out a little bit more. Now this is actually part one of our felting. 
um, after we do the, the felted soap, we'll be making the felted jewelry, the felted beads that you see here on the table. Um, and that is going to require some soapy water. So I think we're going to be able to do a little recycling with the soapy water that I already have. Okay, now you can't tell, but I can feel that it's really starting to tighten up a little bit now. And it will be done very shortly. Now, the other thing, too, about this is that even if it's not totally felted, every time you use this soap, it's going to get felted just a little bit more. So you don't have to go too crazy making sure that it's really, really felted on the outside. This, is actually, this one's actually turning out pretty well because sometimes what happens is that the corners, the soap of the... Um, the soap starts to peek out of the corners. Um, doing a nice rounded soap is kind of nice because it, it uh, eliminates that problem. But this one's working out very well. I don't see any soap coming out. And I think what I'm going to do, this is the nice thing with having the, get some of this extra soap off of me. But kids really, really enjoy doing this. Because what's not to like? Soap, water, bubbles. But you can make a whole bunch of these very quickly and really make a nice little presentation for a gift. And what's not, I mean, what's better than this? I mean, wool naturally made soap. See, it's really coming together now so I can just really rub it and not worry about it um, getting caught in my fingers as I'm rubbing it. So there we go. Now another thing that you can do too, especially when you're working with kids, and I don't have one with me, is you can take a knee high and you can do exactly what I did, get it started, get it wrap up the soap and then put it into the knee high. Um, I don't know if anybody even wears those anymore, but you know, the little nylons that are just for, for like little short stockings and just tie it at the end. Um, and then use that, plunk it in just, just like I'm doing right now and rub it and rub it. And, um, it just keeps all the fibers in place. So especially if you're working with children, you don't have to worry about the fibers coming all over the place. And just so that you can understand what I'm talking about, trying to, um, like say right now, I'm just going to move this here for a second. Um, say that I, well, I'm going to show you if I needed to make a little patch on this, say that um, as I was working, um, a piece got thin and you could see the, um, the soap underneath. So what I would do, and now this is really important, you want to make sure that your hands are really dry. Because if I get my fiber, and you want to make sure that your fiber is away from the water. Because as soon as you wet that, that fiber, you can't put it back onto the wet soap. So say, I'm going to take a little bit of the pink now. So I'm going to take a little bit, and say, and I have, still have a little soap on here. Take a little bit of the pink, and I'm just going to Now I'm just going to put that on top of my soap. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some good squishes so that the water that's already in the soap is going to come out and wet the pink. Now sometimes this works great and it glues all really, really nice. And other times if it lifts up, it becomes separated from the wet soap and it will not stick. It will, you'll, it'll just lift up and you just have to cut it off and get rid of it. So now what I'm just going to do is just rub this new little patch or colored piece on here and we'll see how well it takes. We just keep rubbing it on there. See, I can already see I have, yeah, see, that did not work out too well. Now also, yeah, that didn't work out very well. See now, because this is wet and this is wet, if I try to attach that it's not going to stick. So it has to be totally dry to adhere to the wet. This isn't going to work. So that was actually a very good 
um, good experiment here to show you how that works. Um, so I'm just going to put that here. We'll just keep sticking with the the uh, the paint with what we already have. Sometimes too, uh, something won't adhere very well. This was a different fiber, um, a different type of fiber. Like I have the rovings here, and this one is from a different company. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it works some great, and other times it just, no matter what you do, it's not going to stick properly. So anyway, that one didn't work, but you got the idea. And we'll just keep rubbing this, and this is just about done. And there's not like any specific time period that you can say, okay, it will be done in five minutes. It depends on how, you know, it depends on your fiber. Um, it depends on how much you're rubbing it. It just depends on a whole bunch of things. Um, whether the fiber is cooperating with you. But that's it. So I'm just going to dunk it in here. Now the only thing is that when you go to rinse these things, you're never going to be able to completely get the soap out because the soap is still in, is always going to be in there. So it's always going to be, um, you know, producing suds for you. But I'm just going to put this here. We'll just kind of wrap it up just a little bit. Sometimes you take a little piece of paper towel, just wind it around there, and uh, take the extra soap out. And then once you've done that, oh, this one looks really pretty. I'm just taking the extra soap out of here that you can't see. So there we go. So you can see. And then what you do is when it's done, you can just lay it out and just let it air dry. And then actually... If you're going to give it a gift, as a gift, then you can just dry it out. But if it's something that you're going to use, you can just stick, you know, just put it right in your bathtub um, or the shower and just leave it there. The other nice thing, as opposed to washcloths, is wool is antibacterial. So no matter how many times this gets wet and just sits there, it gets wet and just sits there, it's never going to smell musty or anything like that. So that's one benefit over you know, your, your washcloths or anything like that. Um, but there we go. A really pretty little felted soap. And you can make up a whole bunch of those for a nice little gift. And box them up and you've, you've got something nice to give to somebody. But so that's, that is going to be part one of our little felting um, episode. And we are going to meet again so that we can do our felted beads. So I appreciate you spending time with me today, play with some soap and water, and I look forward to seeing you again. And uh, remember, keep a focus on fiber. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.